Hi guys, I just thought of uh, making a quick video just to show you um, the dynamic range of the Nikon D7200 file. If uh, you are like me, sold your old D7100 and upgrade to the Nikon D7200, um, there are plenty of benefits on, on, on the upgrade. Um, it's not a major, major change, but there are some small increments that really appeal to me. The increased buffer is a very welcomed addition. The fact now that on the top of the LCD, uh, you can see your exposure meter. Uh, whereas before, you know, you either had to look through the uh, viewfinder or the rear display. That's something that Canon always had in most of their uh, DSLRs and uh, so it's a very welcome addition as well to, to the camera. One of the reasons why I chose Nikon over uh, the other brands, it was um, because of its dynamic range. The Nikon D7200 dynamic range is just amazing considering it is a, um, a crop sensor camera. Um, the reason why I sold my Nikon D7100 was um, I, I shoot mostly landscape and dynamic range is it's a huge, huge thing for me. Uh, the problem with Nikon D7100 was that by boosting the exposure and shadow detail, uh, there was an issue with horizontal lines uh, that look like a, a printer when it starts running out of ink. Um, uh, sometimes it would cut through the, the shadow area of an image and it just didn't look appealing to be honest. So. <clears throat> I got two shots here to show you guys. Uh, I took the shot uh, when I went on a trip to Glencoe, uh, the north of Scotland. Um, I underexposed this shot uh, just to show you what you can get out of it. So let's start. First thing I do is I go to uh, camera calibration and camera flat. That's where I want to start from, walking from a flat file. Um, so I go to lens correction. And then make sure the these boxes are ticked, and the, camera, the Lightroom has selected the right profile for my camera. Um, there we go. So now what we're gonna do is um, try to put some some of the uh, try to spread the histogram a little bit. Right, so on about here it's okay. So as you can see, this is a very high dynamic range fire. Uh, the next thing I want to do is apply some clarity. and increase the vibrance. Now I want to increase the white and then increase the blacks. Then increase the contrast a little bit because I'm going to apply uh, contrast using a curve adjustment. I'm going to get my curve adjustment and I'm going to create uh, an S curve. And there you have it, just to give you an idea of what the before and then the after. Before and after. Uh, the other technique that it's commonly used in, in photography, especially uh, in landscape, is to shoot to the right of the histogram and making sure that your highlights are not clipped. If your highlights turn out to be like that, it's very, very, very hard to, or almost impossible to bring back the highlight detail into this area. It's going to be a big white spot right here. So let's just reset the, the exposure. Um, preferably, if I'm shooting, and if I can help, I'll shoot to the right of the histogram. And it's easier to uh, bring back the shadow detail than it is to uh, do the highlights. So, <clears throat> the same fashion, I'll just go back to camera calibration. And I change my profile to flat. And I go to lens correction. And select the right profile for my camera. Uh, what we need to do here is bring the histogram to the middle, right here. Uh, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply some white, just add that little bit of contrast, 
and then I'm going to increase the plot. I'm going to increase the clarity. Change back the black. I'm going to apply some, apply some vibrance. And then I'm going to increase the clarity a little bit. I normally apply uh, contrast with the curve adjustment. And there you have it. So use the before and use the after. Um, I use Nikon cameras as a personal choice, but it's not the only camera I shoot with. Um, one of my first uh, DSLRs, uh, not DSLRs, I think it was a point-to-shoot camera, it was a Nikon camera. So I decided to stick with it. Also, I had point-to-shoot cam uh, Sony cameras, so uh, Nikon and, and, and Sony, it's, uh, it's the type of cameras I use. You know, I use the, one of the A7 series, uh, it has got a great dynamic range as well. And I use an Nikon D7200, and uh, it's just personal choice. It's not better or worse than the other one. Of course, these things are here to to make your life easier. But you know, at the end of the day, it's all about your technique as a photographer. It's all about your your knowledge and your personal uh, take on on photography. There's no right or wrong. You know, photography is so subjective. But um, I've I've no problems with any other brand, and these are the brands of my choice. Um, I've got a couple of shots here I took with the, the Sony E7, and then dynamic range is just just amazing on these cameras. Um, might be the same on, on Canon or Pentax, but I haven't tried them. Um, so uh, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, and leave me a question or comment uh, if you like. Just subscribe and I'm going to show you some of the pictures I took while I was in Glencoe in the north of Scotland. <laughs>